two beautiful teenagers, 18-year-old Sarah Ludeman and 19-year-old Rachel Wade, both in love with this guy, Josh Camacho. He basically said, yeah, I was sleeping with her and her and her, and it, but it was they weren't my girlfriends. They were friends with benefits. The battle for the bad boy played out online and over their phones, each girl taunting and attacking the other. Honestly, what the f you have that's going for you that Josh wants you over me for? He kind of, he sort of, it seemed like made himself into a prize. And the more he played on them, the more they each wanted to be the one he chose. Friends of both the teens say Josh reveled in the attention. Investigators believe he was, in fact, instigating both of these girls. Oh, he basically admitted that he was. But nobody thought the cyber cat fight would end up like this. What happened? <laughs> Rachel! Just found her. Okay, where on the body is the patient? I think it happened in the test. I think everybody just kind of thought again this was a, a high school teenage relationship where somebody was upset and really didn't see this as a powder keg that it actually turned into. Detective Michael Lynch says it was Sarah who came looking for a fight that night to duke it out and lay claim to Josh. What Sarah didn't know was Rachel brought a knife to the fist fight. Unbeknownst to Sarah, uh, Rachel has concealed a small, normal steak knife in her hand at the time that she began swinging at Sarah. Sarah stabbed once in the upper shoulder and then once directly over her heart. Now Sarah bleeding in the middle of the street and gasping for air makes one desperate call, not to her mom or dad, but to Josh. It wasn't even to 911. No, her, her last call, her, her cell phone they found was all sticky with her own blood and she'd reached back in there to, to call Josh. And she says something like, it hurts, it hurts. Jamie Severino, a friend to both the girls, was one of the first on the scene. Everybody was yelling uh, pretty much at Rachel. You know, like, like what you did, I can't believe you did this to her. Rachel was just, you know, sitting there with like a blank look on her face. I don't think she really knew what she did. At that point, Rachel is sitting uh, up on a bench smoking cigarettes and uh, pretty, pretty calm, just like you and I are now. Sarah is rushed to the hospital. Rachel is taken to the Pinellas Police Department for questioning. What kind of knife is it? Detective Lynch begins with that small steak knife. Why did you have it with you? Because they said that they were going to find my car and follow me, and she threatened to kill me. Okay. So you, are you telling me that you had it for some form of protection? Yeah, because I, I know they're going to jump me. This is the knife. Show me how you were holding it. I had it out to the side, and she started swinging on me, and then when I went to put my hands out, she was swinging on me, and I tried to defend myself. Uh, when you first hear the interview with her, you would have thought that this was just a, a teenage fight. I went out. Um, and met this girl on the street, we fought, and that was the end of it. When Sarah was hitting me, I went to hit her and I really did not even stop her. I'm gonna kill somebody. Rachel claims, an eyewitness's accounts confirmed, Sarah took the first swing, landing three punches to Rachel's head. Rachel claims she forgot she even had the knife in her hand. She says she just threw her hands up to defend herself. Why didn't you just run in the house and call the police? I have been after me all the time. I did not. So you wanted it to end and be over with. Yeah, but right? I have no intentions whatsoever on stabbing her. What did you do with the knife once you had it? I threw it. Where? To, like towards the neighbor's house. Just in the grass, over the fence, what? I threw it up. I don't know where it landed. Up on the roof? I don't know if it was on the roof or in their backyard or. Then the moment Rachel never saw coming. The next piece of information that you need to know is that she is dead. Oh my God. What started as a teenage cat fight turns to genuine heartbreak. And she died as a result of these stab wounds that she had. Rachel landed just two jabs with that steak knife. One pierced Sarah's heart. I didn't know where any of this stab, and I just wanted them to finally leave me alone. She's not going to follow you anymore because she's dead now. <laughs> Do you think she knew she killed Sarah? I think, you know, this was a cat fight gone awry. Police charge Rachel with second degree murder. Do you believe this was self-defense? Yes, 100%. But how would a jury see it? Prosecutors paint Rachel as a vindictive girlfriend who took the knife with the intent to harm Sarah. Rachel took the fight out to Sarah in the middle of the road and then brought a deadly weapon with her. That's not stand your ground. 
But Rachel's attorney, Kelly McCabe, says she was standing her ground and had the right to protect herself. Do you believe Rachel could have ran away or maybe chose to do something different? You don't have to run away. That's the law. The law is you get to stand your ground. A very believable argument. Then prosecutors drop this. Seriously, I told you to watch the back and not to kill with him. Now you're out of his mind and I'm guaranteeing you I'm no murder you. I'm going to kill you. That phone call was made eight months before the fatal night. Still, it will seal Rachel's fate. We the jury find as follows as to the defendant in this case. The defendant is guilty of murder in the second degree as charged. So say we all. Rachel is sentenced to 27 years behind bars. The statement that was made by Rachel was that she was going to kill her, that she was going to kill Sarah, and that was uh, very, uh, very difficult to overcome in the fact that she ultimately did kill Sarah. So what about the man in the middle and the part Josh Camacho played in this deadly love triangle? Should he be held accountable for something? I mean, for what, cheating know. on girls? One of the prosecutors at the trial said something like, you know, you can't charge someone with being a jerk. Loved ones on both sides of this case believe Josh played a major role. Unfortunately, police say there aren't any charges they can bring forward against him. I went to Josh's house to try to get his side of the story. I'm Michelle Sagona from Crime Watch Daily, and we're doing a story on Rachel and Sarah, and we're trying to get his perspective and his, his side of what happened. Josh wasn't home, but his mother told us her son played no part in Sarah's death. Do you believe that Josh should have been held responsible or accountable for what he did? Can you help me find Josh? Rachel's new attorney is fighting to reopen the case, hoping to prove Rachel was acting in self-defense. But the lives of two teenage girls are now forever changed because they never stopped to consider the consequences. There was no winner in this. Uh, you know, one family lost their daughter to prison over a, a senseless act of fighting over a boy, and the other family completely lost their daughter forever, you know, that they'll never see again. So what do you think? After hearing all the details on Wade's case, did the jury make the right decision? Sound off right now on our Facebook page.